Good morning, and as I said earlier, welcome to today's Energy Subcommittee hearing on the recommendations of the Commission to review the effectiveness of the National Energy Labs. Today, we will hear from the Commission's co-chairs, Mr. T.J. Is it Glothier? Glothier, I can do this. And Dr. Cherry Cohen, as well as Dr. Peter Littlewood. Thank you for having a simple name, Doctor. Uh, Director of Argonne National Laboratory regarding the extent to which the DOE lab system is working well and where it can improve. Like many topics we discuss in the Energy Subcommittee, this one requires a thorough understanding of the details. Of the DOE's 17 national labs, 10 are stewarded by the Office of Science for Basic Research, three by the National Nuclear Security Administration, or the NNSA, uh, to maintain the nuclear weapons stockpile, and four by their respective DOE applied energy programs. Each of the 17 labs has distinct characteristics and capabilities that bring a unique set of challenges when it comes to management, oversight, safety, and security. For example, this summer, I, along with staff, had the opportunity to visit the Savannah River National Lab along with some of my colleagues on the, on the committee. The Savannah River complex is hundreds of square miles and houses critical infrastructure for the nation's nuclear deterrent as well as facilities to support research pro subjects ranging from national security to environmental management. As the witnesses will observe today, 16 of the 17 national labs are government owned, contractor operated, which requires a certain degree of trust between owner and operator to, for us to achieve optimal results. That said, there is one fundamental question relevant to every subject we're likely to discuss today, whether it's collaborative research with the private sector, technology transfer, laboratory directed research and development, also known as LDRD, or safety and security. So the question is, how much discretion should the DOE delegate to contractor operators while balancing the need to maintain DOE's oversight responsibilities? Ultimately, we're debating a risk-reward concept that is familiar to Congress because we have to balance similar concerns when legislating federally sponsored research and development. On one hand, providing more discretion to the researchers allows them to pursue the most creative ideas without encumbrances. But on the other hand, too much discretion without effective oversight can lead to waste or misuse of taxpayer funds. And as I, as I mentioned before, the 17 labs are very diverse, so the approach for each lab should be distinct if we're gonna get this right. That said, I look forward today to the recommendations of this distinguished witness panel as we consider legislative options to help the labs reach their full potential. Again, I thank the witnesses for their attendance, and I look forward to your testimony. And with that, I recognize Mr. Alan Grayson.